O fortuna, velut luna. O fortune like the moon, changeable, waxing and waning. So sings the chorus at the start of Karl Orff's unforgettable Carmina Burana. This is Mark Schulgold here to guide you through this 1937 work performed Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with Andrew Litton leading the Colorado Symphony Orchestra and Chorus and the Colorado Children's Chorale in Betcher Concert Hall. Listen to the famous opening of Fortune, Empress of the World. <laughs> That ominous Latin text comes from one of 320 poems written by 15 mostly anonymous monks back in the 13th century. This collection was found at the Bavarian monastery of Benedict Beuren in 1803 and published in 1847. Now, Orff chose 24 of those poems for his breakthrough work, Carmina. Burana. The title means Songs from Boiron. So excited was Orff at completing this exuberant, inspired score that he told his publisher, everything I have written to date can be destroyed. Following that pulsating opening, which also serves to end the work, we're introduced to the ancient Wheel of Fortune. No, not the one from TV. It's fate, here described as a whirling, malevolent wheel. Later, the chorus intones Fortuna rota volvitur, fortune's wheel turns. Ah, but then the mood changes as spring arrives. The joyous meadows are laughing, we are told, and the chorus of maidens promises a thousand joys. All this happy music leads to dancing, including a delicious, rhythmically herky-jerky instrumental. After all that dancing, it's time to hit the tavern. And remember, these poems were written by monks. 
Well, as the drinking begins, we hear a lost soul who compares himself to a leaf played with by the winds. At the end, he decides to give himself to vice. We also get a list of everyone who drinks. Hint, no one is excluded. Then the work turns totally bizarre as we hear the lament of a poor swan while he roasts away on the spit to be sung by a tenor in agonized falsetto. After all that drinking, the final section turns to pleasures of the flesh. In the court of love, we encounter verses that are close to being R-rated, culminating in the ecstatic cry of a young maiden giving herself to her sweetheart. In triumph, the chorus returns, singing its praise of love and those who embrace it, before once again reminding us of the cruelty of fortune's ever-changing moods. For the Colorado Symphony, this is Mark Schulgold. See you at Betcher.